Welcome to the Zoning Advisory Committee meeting, Hopkinton, and this is December 10th. <laughs> um, we are still hoping for one more person to arrive, but um, just discussing the, the um, dates for upcoming meetings. So um, December 20th will be our next meeting at 7 o'clock. Everybody here right now can still attend that. Yep, we set that up last time. So Then get a bit of a break, and the next one is January 7th, Monday, January 7th. And we were planning on having one January 21st, but that happens to be Martin Luther King Day. So, um, Elaine, we can't hold it that day. No. So, is there is there any possibility for the people attending today um, for a Tuesday night meeting, mm -hmm. the 22nd? I don't know. Is that just, You'll be out of town. Okay. Is that design will be board meeting? I, I don't know. I'm going to check the calendar. <laughs> I can't be there. I don't see it listed. I, I, I don't see it. did put out a list, but I haven't. Mm. There are no, no meetings on the calendar that night yet. Okay. So why don't we check it out with the whole membership and double check, you know, I don't know if everybody's got their meetings on for January yet, <laughs> just to make sure we're not conflicting with anybody. Did we pencil in the 20, we're not doing it on the 21st, right, right correct? Right, we can't. So, do you, so we can we pencil, pencil in the 22nd, in the 22nd yeah. and just, Let's do that. Wait for confirmation. Yes, let's. And Elise will not be able to attend. Um, but the other four of us can. So, yes. so one, two. Okay, so the third Tuesday in January is the DR Bay, typically. That's. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's so usually I, it would be the fifteenth. It doesn't look like we have a contact at that night. Okay. All right. So we'll check it off up, yep. offline, you know, because there's so many people missing <clears throat> today. All right. Uh, okay. So um, today our agenda is uh, we've got so, uh, quite a few things on the agenda, but there there many of them are fairly small and short. So. Um, the increased screening requirements for commercial solar facilities was our first item. And um, Elaine and Georgia provided the current wording under the use regulations. I'm just, uh, this was in the attachment to our, our um, packet. Under the use regulations, so it's 210-202B, um, all setback yard buffer and screening requirements applicable in the zoning district in which the installation is located shall apply. And then C, all security fences shall be set back from the property line a distance equal to the setback requirement to buildings within the zoning district in which the installation is located. Um, and I believe E is also applicable, the visual impact of the commercial solar voltaic installation, including all accessory structures, shall be mitigated. All accessory structures and appurtenances shall be architecturally compatible with each other. Um, whenever reasonable, structures shall be shielded from view by vegetation and or joined or clustered to avoid adverse visual impacts. Methods such as the use of landscaping, natural features, and fencing may be utilized. That's a lot of ifs, maybes, and so on. Uh, <laughs> but, um, and then I don't know if, if Elaine, do you know if the, the next, the buffers around non-residential uses in residential districts, was that included for this topic? Because it does apply to solar as well, because it's a non-residential use, right. if it's located in a residential district. Okay, so that's on page five of our packet, but page 79 of the bylaws. Um, and that says, um, a lot which contains a non-residential use in a residence A, residence B, residence lakefront or agricultural district shall contain a buffer area at the perimeter of the lot. The buffer area shall consist of trees, shrubs, vegetation, and topographical features sufficient to separate and or visually screen the use from abutting properties in a residential district 
and shall be located on the same lot as the non-residential use. So, um, so essentially, that that the solar solar does apply to that whenever it's a residence or agricultural district. Can I ask the, mm -hmm. the bullet point on our agenda says screening requirements for commercial solar facilities. Mm -hmm. Is the commercial related to the the solar or the zoning? Commercial is related to the solar. Yeah. So the so a commercial. Solar could be in a residential area. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and is to clarify so that you could put solar voltaic on your house and you could get the benefit for it on your house. But that would be a residential. That's use. a residential use. But if you're doing it in a private property and you're selling it to back to the grid or for another okay. commercial use. If I want to put a solar field out in back. And sell that back, okay. then that's what that means. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Okay. And I actually found a slightly, slight, slight, slightly different wording in, in some of the, in some of the other um, bylaws that were um, included. I'm just paging through looking for it. A buffer area containing natural material will form an effective year-round screen between the industrial uses and the residential zone. That just happens to be in the industrial zoning bylaws. It's, it's in there. Um, so it doesn't apply to the commercial solar facilities right now. It's just I liked part of that wording because it says will form an effective year-round screen. And that is not specifically mentioned in the commercial solar voltaic. Um, and, and that has seemed to be one of the issues that we've had with some of the other um, solar fields that have been put into place, is just an effective year-round screen. I, I happen to drop a kid off, you know, seems to be my life. <laughs> dropping kids off places. <laughs> I dropped a, dropped a friend off at their house and it's, it's in the, um, the Teresa Road area, you know, some of those extensions. And I, I, I'd heard about the solar um, facility back there, but I hadn't seen it because I just hadn't been in the right place. But it's right behind this, this person's house. And I was like, aha, that's what they're talking about. Because it is really very visible. Um, and it probably is, is screened relatively well during the summer, but not during the winter, fall, winter. So, so it's, uh, it's very visible. Okay. Does anybody have any other suggestions as to what we can do to beef up the, um, the wording on this? I, I just had a question in terms of when something says increase, mm -hmm. What, from what to what? Because the, the language that we have in here already says it needs to be effective. So what are, what are we trying to accomplish with this particular verbiage to say increase? If I made it to the chair, I think that what mm -hmm. we should be saying is make it, make it more effective as opposed to increase because um, we also have to be careful about uh, the height you know, we could tell them to put arborvitae, which block, but then they continue to grow, or cypress trees that don't get up to 60 feet. Mm -hmm. and then make them make it uh, ineffective as a, as a solar farm. As I recall, uh, one of the things that Ted mentioned before was that, it's too bad he can't be here because this was one of his items, was that he was looking for a great a distance of, of screening. Right now, there isn't a specified distance unless it's in a residential district. There's no required distance of screening. So I think he was looking for- You mean like the buffer, depth of plantings right? like or something? Yeah. Like a double row. That's what, that's what I recall him asking about. Um, your point, Ron, though, is good. I, uh, that that um, we need to, um, I think, be careful about how we state the problem being addressed. Hmm. So. Right. Yeah. So that, you know, I think that that's what I you're, think it's you're saying is that is that perhaps we should reword the problem being you know to be addressed is that 
with solar facilities right now, um, there, does, there does not seem to be effective visual block for year round. And we want to improve the wording oh, of that, it, yeah, right? Just, no, basically, yeah. just, uh, uh, let's look into making the um, screening more effective for, so, for future solar facilities. So I just have a question. So when we specify that more effective, it's not like a measurable stuff that you can keep hold them against. Is that OK, or that no, no, it no, is no, a? That's setting the problem. Okay. We're, we're saying that the, the, the task, instead of saying increase screening, okay. the task in front of us is okay. changed to um, make it more effective. OK, thank you. So, so therefore, you know, with, the, with it stated well, we can then formulate the solution that would you know, be appropriate. Can we go back to, to letter E here? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it reads, the visual impact of commercial solar installation, including all accessory structures, shall be mitigated. That's pretty strong language. Now, who is the arbiter of how do we define mitigated? But then when you go, whenever reasonable, structures shall be shielded from view. I'm. I'm I'm just trying to understand what that seemed pretty comprehensive language in there that says the zoning law says visual has to be mitigated and um, structures shall be seen to at to avoid adverse visual impacts. Mm -hmm. I, I'm looking for some. So what are we trying to accomplish beyond what this is is talking about? Without being specific, the planning board has. Ability to so say you, that's okay. You're, you're not doing this, or you, or you are, are doing yeah, this. Yeah, right. So, I mean, it could be different materials. It could be a fence. It could be, you know, yeah. plantings. But does it? But does it make sense to take away the um, flexibility, and you know, instead dictate specifics here? I think I the, the one that point that you brought up, the year-round screen, mm -hmm. is the most valid. Everything else seems to be. But, just but I, th like a, I think the planning board has the has the ability now to say what you're proposing there will not um, avoid adverse visual impacts because in the winter all the leaves are gone. Right. Well, I, I don't disagree. <laughs> no, I. Do you have the thoughts? I think the only I, thing it would be to put evergreens in, but then you're restricting it even more. With you know, it depends on the property. If the property, right. they're, they're uphill, evergreens yeah. are only going to do so much. Mm -hmm. If they're level, then you can shield it more. So it really depends case to case. Yeah. I, I think this gives the planning board a lot of latitude to say this. And, you know, you have to do this or you can't do that. And then it, the, the next sentence says, methods such as the use of landscaping, natural fences, and fencing may be utilized. Mm -hmm. Well, here, Here's a whole palette of solutions available to you. It's up to the developer to come up with something that the planning board agrees accomplishes this part of zoning. Mm -hmm. I, I wish Ted were here to explain why, why we need to do something beyond this or why this isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. Well, we could table this until yeah, it we comes can. back. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem. Yeah. Does anyone have any other thoughts on it right I now? The idea of adding in year round, okay. because I can see how this statement That might do here. it right there. Yep. Yeah, I think adding mm -hmm. that is sufficient. You want to make that motion? <laughs> Yep, that makes sense. Um, here, where would we put it? We could do the wordsmithing later. Okay, sure. To add in um, <laughs> year round. Thank you, Elaine. Effective year round? Effective year round. Second. Discussion? 
I don't know if it's possible, but can we hold on this on a vote and wait until another meeting to briefly discuss it when Ted is here to see whether or not he has additional things? Well, we can always add, we yeah. can always add, add to it. Yeah. This is, just, just gets it. Oh, this gets, just gets the gets first part done. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you make him back and say, oh, it's perfectly effective. Okay, great. Okay. I get it. Okay, good. All right. Any members of the public that wanted to comment on the solar voltaic installations or? No? Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? No. Okay. All right. So we'll add year round to the wording, but we'll work on the word, wordsmithing. And our next agenda item. So, to allow educational vocational schools by right in the industrial A, industrial B, and professional office districts. So there were three <coughs> separate sections of the bylaws that um, Georgia and Lillane included in the packet. One for industrial A, one for industrial B, and one for professional office districts. And then each one of them lists, these things are allowed by right, these things are allowed by special permit. Um, and I'm sure you all read that. Um, and so, so this is, um, and, and, I, and obviously, um, the purpose of this is to expand the uh, potential commercial uses of these districts in town, right? Okay. Is there any other problem this is addressing? this suggestion, this proposal? I mean, it ties right into the master plan goals of uh, maintaining zoning regulations that reflect the town wishes for commercial growth and development by expanding these uses, it ties into the, to one of the goals. Good. And it matches the vision statement that we are a um, well-educated town. Education. Yeah. All I right. Want, I did want to add that so educational uses are one of the um, exempt uses under the statute, which means they can't be unreasonably regulated, so they are essentially allowed everywhere. But it's good to put it in the bylaw as well. Okay. So. Just so they don't have to yep. jump through hoops mm -hmm. and actually go to the ZBA to try and get us to allow it. Be adversarial. And we right. do list so. it in, in some of the other districts, so it makes sense to continue that. So That's just a quick the question. Amendment? Yeah, it's one so of those a, a business like a swimming swim school would it come under an educational institution mm. or indoor? It's all how they present it. it. If they present themselves as as educational and want to use the Dover Amendment, okay. But if you know if we allow it by right, then they don't have to. You know, as, as as Elaine said, it doesn't have to be adversarial. Okay. We could say yes. We try to encourage people coming in and, and doing educational facilities. Okay. We can word it however oh. the committee would like. Okay. <laughs> um, well, we could also, you know, if the indoor re recreational use is one of the yeah. topics we we're going to discuss tonight. So, um, which the swim, uh, swim school, for instance, could fall under either one of them, it feels like. I don't know if we would want to put those together. Um, you see, they seem different enough, but. Yeah, I think they're, they're, they're different. Yeah, because they're, somebody, they're different somebody, enough. Yeah, they they're might come in enough. as a, if you want to if you want to present yourself as an indoor recreational, if you want to present yourself as a educational facility. Right. So, how do people feel about that? It should be you know specifically listed as a as a right as a right rather than special permit. Well, uh, well I, I don't know if that's a, uh, a straw poll if we're. Well, no, no, I'm just trying to open up for more comments, oh, you know, yeah, like just, yeah, just yeah, give yeah, people ideas just, about thinking about it different ways. So well, I think as one of the exempt uses, it's probably not the best idea to put it by a special permit because mm -hmm. then you can't deny the special permit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not listed at all right now. So. <laughs> and, um, and what about um, the differences between our industrial A, industrial B, and professional office areas? No? You feel... I mean, and this, especially, you know, those of you who have been around town government for a while, um, 
how in general at town meeting do do people do people tend to want to vote more restrictive in one zone versus another i mean do people feel more protective of, of one particular area? So yeah. industrial A is... I think it depends on which zone you're abutting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's fair. The traffic you're generating to that site and the lighting and all yeah. that stuff. Okay. So I think one of the things that came up was this Liberty Mutual building that John's a big fan of. You know, vocational or education use would be ideal there. Right. But the the surrounding residents, they may feel that the traffic you're generating is a different kind of traffic. Right. Maybe the hours of operation are different. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the so thing. When we open this up, I don't know like, if the planning board has the ability to say, yes, but we want to reduce your hours to this, or do, do you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. It's like this, in a lot of towns, the industrial um, zones, you know, is sort of like the down and dirty zone. Not so much here in Huntington, but right. you know, so a lot of commercial, other commercial zone uh, uses are, um, you know, welcomed because they're a higher level, mm -hmm. higher tax level, higher rent level, higher value level, the whole nine yards. But where we have this particular one property that's out there. It's in a residential area. I mean, that's the only thing that I'm, I can't think of all the situations that might occur about that one, but it, to me, um, this use would be a great use there as long as we understand the traffic, the light, the hours of operation. Mm -hmm. yeah, however, through the chair, one of the things is that they can always still just hit us with the Dover Amendment, mm -hmm. and it's, a, it's almost a done deal other, other than some site plan review. If it's, uh, if, if, uh, and the statute says that you can <clears throat> consider reasonable regulations concerning the bulk and height of structures and determining yard sizes, lot area, setbacks, open space, parking, and building coverage requirements. So when it comes to educational uses, that's all you can consider. And safety, too. That's all, but that's all the statute says you can consider. It doesn't say anything about safety. No. It's one of the right. safest buildings we're looking in. <laughs> you know, when you're when you're proposing something, I thought that the planning board had the ability to say, you know what, this is not safe. So therefore, you need to adapt your plan. It depends, and this is a particular use that's uh, the statute says this is something you have to allow, and these are the things you can consider. So that's that's how it's limited. Okay, so just to back up for a second, Industrial A is the South Street, roughly speaking, it's the South Street mm -hmm. area. Industrial B is the other side of 495 um, alongside um, Main 135. And, um, and then, and there's a spot, um, I think it's the Har Harvey, is that this, this industrial B? Mm -hmm. Harvey, mm -hmm. the Harvey. And then the professional office district is in that residential area of the, the Liberty Mutual, so it's over by Ashland. <coughs> And there's a, a little spot of industrial B then along Cedar Street too, but but that's but that's mostly the talk, the things we're talking about. Okay, so so for vocational and educational, um, I think this is our chance probably to say what we would appreciate <laughs> to be considered in even though we cannot restrict it for the Dover Amendment, right? So we could say it's allowed by right. Um, I would say, I would say we would want to present it separately as separate items for Industrial A, Industrial B, and the professional office for town meeting. Not to say we'd present it as one, one bylaw change because they're all separate um, bylaws anyhow, right? You mean so, and articles? Yes, separate? articles, I'm sorry, yes. They're all separate anyhow, so we'd have to sep do three separate ones. It could be all the same if you're making the same change to each of them. Because, yeah. you, because you have to remember that when you're on town meeting floor, when there's 72 articles. I know, I know. Or yeah. 80 articles, it makes a big difference you know, whether we're there one, two, three. Okay, so you can yes. we could present it all as one. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Right, that's going to go because through the planning board after us. So, so this is, you know, we're, we're, we're starting it up, and then it still goes to the planning board. They can always separate them out or something, okay. with, you know, depending on what they might want to do. Okay. And um, it seems like South Street would be relatively relatively uncontroversial. It seems like this, that, that area would make a lot of sense for this use. And as you were pointing out, Drea, um, that perhaps the professional office district might be a little bit more controversial because of higher traffic in and out and the traffic not being just restricted to morning rush hour, or evening rush hour. But I, I, I'm not trying to restrict the use from that particular location no. because the building is a great building for yeah, that. It is. I'm just trying to figure out what, how the planning board could guide the, the, that use in that location. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it has been a, it has been a, a working, functioning right. company right. With, right. with many employees yeah. for a, a very, very long time. Yeah. And uh, doing, they've done a lot of t uh, different kinds of testing and, and, and uh, lots of uh, functions, and, and they do a lot of training there already. That's, mm -hmm. so, they, so they had, uh, I believe at the peak, about 125 employees, but then they also had um, a dozen training rooms with up to 60 people in each training room coming in and out each day. So it's not, it's, it's, it's not like it hasn't been used as, a, as an educational facility already. Mm -hmm. From the statute, is does it mention hours of operation or no? Okay. So, because that's that's the only thing so that I would think. Definitely, of. we want to we want to allow it there, but we want to allow it and make sure that we have some guidelines to offer the person or group that wants to come in there. Yeah. Well, I mean, as an educational use, what kind of hours might it reasonably have? It probably isn't a twenty-four hour operation, necessarily. But it certainly could be open until the later evening hours. Mm -hmm. It could be. But the use has that leeway. Yeah. Just like the schools we have now. Right. Public schools. Right. Yeah. They have um, the evening events, teachers. But they they're in stuff. a different area. They're on yeah. Main Street. And it's like. They're in a residential district. No, yeah, which El not, still Elmwood they're just. Elmwood School. Elmwood School. It's Route 85. But also, this, these events wouldn't be happening every single day. It would just, it would be... We don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, but they, I mean, think, think Keefe Tech or another vocational school. They have evening classes um, that they generally offer for, you know, adults and things like that. And right. I remember taking a woodworking class and the, the facility was open until 11 or 12. But if a company moved into where Liberty Mutual is, there's nothing restricting their hours of operation. They could yeah, have multiple shifts. They could be open 24-7. Yeah. It's very true. But also, if there is a class, let's say it goes till 10, mm -hmm. there might only be like 10 people in the class. You know, that's only 10 people. That you, that's not a lot of traffic yeah. coming and going. That's true. It's not going to generate a lot of noise or disruption. My feeling on this is that the all the, the buy right uses there already are not that. I mean, it, we're already allowing a lot of things going on there, and industrial uses. I mean, our educational uses are going to, are not going to be any more taxing on on those environments than what's currently allowed by right. All we're doing is just putting that language in there that says we. We want you we're to accepting know we're, we're accepting you by right to do educational uses along with these other things that we've already allowed. Before you come and try to basically sue us for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, it's, we're it's going true. to this, you're going to ZBA or to the, would they go through ZBA? For they would go court? to the zoning enforcement officer, to the building inspector, and if, if he is, or she issued a, an opinion that they didn't agree with, then they could appeal that to the CBA. Right, so they, if they, if it's one of those, if they're gonna get it anyway, then at least, at least let's bring down a hurdle so that we might be able to encourage um, an educational facility. Because we, we had that come up um, about six months ago where um, Framingham, was it not Framingham State? Yes, uh, Bay, Bay State was looking for a, uh, another facility out here. It ended up going into Framingham. 
but um, you know that 490, 495 would have been a perfect spot to put uh, a, uh, an alternate campus or a satellite campus. But we didn't have it in our zoning. How big is the building again? How big is who? The Liberty Mutual building. Is it 50, 100,000 feet? No, I don't know. Off, offhand, I think it could be up as high as 90. It could be a lot more people than 125 people in the building. I'm just pointing out the obvious. If there is an application for a school and we had this changed, um, does the planning board have the ability to change the, you know, the hours or? No. Why not? Because they don't have that, that ability, that authority under the statute. Under the professional office. Under so. the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 3. But that's if they're doing the Dover. Right. I'm not so talking it's a, about that. I'm so it's an educational use, public, private, nonprofit. I guess what I'm saying is that if they don't follow the Dover Amendment, if, if we have the zoning available for them to be there, then all of a sudden the conversation goes to, we'd like you to be open X number of hours versus 24 hours. So it doesn't matter whether it's listed or not in the zoning bylaw, they could still have, take advantage of those Dover Amendment provisions whether we list it or not. And they could agree, you know, work with the town and come to an agreement as far as hours and so forth goes, but it couldn't be mandated by the planning board. The Dover Amendment was used to build the Marathon School to get around things that the planning board wanted. So it's not just <clears throat> outside uh, uh, outfits that would mm -hmm. use that, but we even used it on ourselves, mm -hmm. so to speak. And actually, if, if say, um, a school went in there right now and didn't change anything, didn't change the parking exterior, didn't need site plan review, then there would be no review by the planning board. Because mm -hmm. the building's already there. And it's set up pretty well for it, too. Because I see it, like, if, if, the, if a college like Bay State or something comes there, they wouldn't want our restrictions, at least for the labs and stuff like that, if the students want to work off hours and stuff, yeah. putting a restriction on the hours restricts their ability to have kids work extra. That's true. Any comments from the public on this topic? Please. Sorry, I have you with me today. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm not sure where I might fit in on this, um, but as I look at some of my response zones, and some of our growth, we've done a lot of work with like trying to see if we, for public sake, safety wise, and just in this conversation, when you happen to focus on the Liberty Mutual property versus 495, um, we're doing a lot of future looking at how we serve 495. Um, I guess the way I want to say it is similar to like even down at Fruit Street, when we're looking at an elementary school down there. I was kind of cringing because of our response zone to get there was really challenging from what the public expects to a school. So I don't know, you know, the certain types of educational facilities you could have in there, but if they did something like a, a grade school or something like that, I'd be nervous where this gets at about the six minute mark for us responding. And just to try to like, so far, other than a couple outliers like that area, we don't really have to worry about getting a fire station right down in there. So I just, Impact-wise, I don't know how it affects the conversation, but I just wanted to talk to you about that. It's there's certain responses where the Liberty Mutual, Liberty Mutual site is kind of on the farther edge of response, and I don't know that any of the scenarios that we're thinking about are going to improve that dramatically. Um, it's right on the edge, so it's not like it's a no-go, but it's something that I almost want to just have that information out ahead of somebody making a decision to put something there wherever it's appropriate. So just to share that with you. Thank you. Okay. And that undoubtedly affects, you know, some of the other topics on this list, so, yeah. So just a quick, I don't understand, so I'm trying to get to it, but industrial B, based on the map, it doesn't seem like it can accommodate like a huge college or anything like that. It seems like it can accommodate only smaller facilities. So letting edu if you if we encourage educational facilities come in there, maybe it'll attract more 
businesses like classes and stuff, like kids classes and stuff. We, I am just thinking instead of tackling everything together, if industrial A is a bigger area, which means a bigger business can come in, right? Right. But industrial B would it can't uh, such, a, such a big thing cannot fit in there. So maybe it's easier to split them out and think about them separately. Yeah, but but what would you propose different wording for industrial B, for instance? Yeah, yeah. so I, n uh, not be as restrictive about educational facilities or the size of the educational facilities for industrial B because naturally it's not going to go up. But in industrial A, if you're setting something up, put limits as to this. Um, it cannot have more than 100 people at a time or something like that. The restrictions can come into place in industrial A. Whereas industrial B can be more open. Because you think it'll be limited naturally by the by fact the size that the size available. Sizes, I see. No? No, they, you, they, they, there's still a lot of this. Uh, the way I see it is that um, you know, the, 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 the areas look small because we're looking on a scaled map, but there's still a lot of acreage. You know, when we, when, even when we think about the, if, if you've ever been out to the Liberty Mutual area, they, they, they um, they test uh, skid paths, and there's a whole basically a racetrack behind behind it where they test tires and, and truck stopping and everything else. So hmm. there's a lot. There's a lake behind there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a lot of area there, and it looks like this little teeny square. And then you look that this is about the same size. Yeah. And um, so so you know, it's saying that somebody would just because it's it seems like a small area, somebody would build a smaller building. Uh, it mm -hmm. doesn't. Yeah, it's a big area. Yeah, it's still <laughs> big area. Right, yeah, yeah. So, um, so what are we trying to get to? I'm looking at this saying the uses that we've we're already permitted by right mm -hmm. are already. I mean, a lot of the discussion that we're having here is saying we're already allowing all this stuff to happen by right already. All we're doing here is specifying education vocational schools by right mm -hmm. in addition to the already pretty lengthy list of approved uses it's, it's just it, it's a it, it gives people a little bit more confidence that we would be receptive to that mm -hmm. but if if you want to uh, build a robotics and precision instrument manufacturing facility there it's already allowed by right so i mean your point, Chief, is, is a great one, that it's going to take a long time to get out to the Liberty Mutual site. But zoning's already saying we can do that. What this uh, agenda item is saying is let's just add educational in there by right, just as, as one more way to say, here's, here's what we're allowing. Well, we do know it won't end up being, being a, um, an elementary school, <laughs> primary school. We've, we've got those. Um, so it'd be more adult education anyway. It could, uh, be, it could be a private school, private education, uh, elementary school. Oh, that's true. That is true. Something okay, so for, proposed uh, wording. So uh, I'll I'll uh, propose an amendment, uh, a, a, a motion, to allow educational vocational schools by right in industrial A, industrial B, and the professional office districts. Second. Any further discussion? Oh, send forward to uh, send 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 forward to send the planning board. Planning board. Mm -hmm. okay. hey, yes. I agree. <laughs> I th think it has to be assumed. That's the well, case in I'm all just, cases. Well, I'm just <laughs> yeah. um, yes, and I I really do believe it has to just be just that listed. Just you know, it's it's a list of by right, and most of them don't have a lot of verbiage in them. And because of the Dover Amendment having restrictions on restrictions, um, <laughs> that I think it just needs to say educational vocational schools, period. Mm. Yeah, mm. I think that's all. all right. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. No. Okay. Any abstentions? No. Okay. Okay. I 
I would like to bump up the recreational uses by right first before the retail store. Which one's this and one? Indoor recreational uses by right. Oh, sorry, just make it in industrial A and industrial B. Sorry, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> I came straight from the plane right to here. Oh. And down the car. <laughs> okay. Indoor recreational uses. So, again, this is the, the issue that is being proposed is in order to expand the commercial uses in these areas, um, make it easier by putting it as a by right um, rather than by special permit or something like that in order to uh, make it easier for, for new businesses to move in. Um, indoor recreation. Um, so I have an, an impression of what this means. Um, I'm thinking like the, um, the, the places that have the big blow ups, you know, that sometimes you rent and put in your yard, but those are all in, inside a warehouse kind of space. Um, and um, there's already health clubs listed mm -hmm. in industrial A and industrial B. So those are, those are almost like a health club, but not quite. <laughs> um, what else for industrial, for, for, I'm sorry, for indoor recreational use, what would you think that means? So uh, from the public hearing, they mentioned something like Apex, right? In Apex has variety of indoor recreation, escape rooms, uh, half acts, which I don't know if, which, uh, it should, should we restrict that because it's not, I don't know how safe it is to throw access at a wall and stuff like that. So uh, VR rooms where uh, you can rent out for half an hour, $50, you sit the VR stuff. And then, then there is, yeah, the indoor play area for the kids, mm -hmm. uh, indoor arcade. Bowling, I don't know if it qualifies. It, these are all what I've seen in Apex. And if we are looking at something like Apex, could all these be possibilities? I suppose they could be, particularly if we don't restrict it and we just say indoor recreational. But we can, we can list some things specifically, or we can exclude specific things if we don't think that they're appropriate. Um, um, I just, we, so in our zoning bylaw now, we define indoor recreation? We do? We do, yeah. in the definition section. Oh, really? So I can read that if you Okay, know. thanks. Please um, a facility within a permanent building or structure designed and equipped for the conduct of sports, athletic, and other leisure time activities, provided that all activities are conducted entirely within the building and no noise generated within the facility may be heard at the property line. Such activities may include swimming, skating, indoor skydiving, soccer, bowling, and other similar uses, but shall not include arcades and billiard halls unless accessory to another indoor recreation use. That was 2015 that was added. Okay. So the definition is there, but then it's not listed specifically. It's listed. By right, is it? It's listed as a special permit use in industrial B. Special permit only? Okay. Because we already, uh, you, you mentioned the, um, the air structures. Uh, yes. When we um, approved the swim and tennis club, it was approved with several um, air-filled structures mm -hmm. to cover up the uh, tennis courts and the, and the pools during the, during the off-seasons. And the John Smith soccer in Milford, that would be another potential indoor use. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. And they have a lot of different things inside there, other than the soccer fields. But underneath that definition, most of the things that you're discussing at Apex could fit in in that as, yeah. as it stands now. Yeah. Um, the industrial areas of most towns, um, they don't have the kind of parking that recreational uses require. And I'm assuming that the planning board would have some kind of a requirement on the parking and the traffic and stuff like that, because it's completely different. Oh, there'll be site plan review, wouldn't it, Elaine? Yes. If well, someone was building or changing the exterior, but if they went into an existing building, mm -hmm. perhaps, maybe not. But there would be uh, there's been there's been a facility like this that's um, uh, and I don't know if it's there anymore because my kids aren't that young anymore. Um, <laughs> but 
right on South Street, one of the very first buildings that you turn into to the left, you know, where you could turn right into Price Chopper and so on. There's, in the very first building on the corner of South Street, um, was, was an indoor play area that had some blow up types of things as well as some other places to play. So, and it was a, it was a, you know, just, you know, pay per visit kind of thing, so. It was also a CrossFit. So, so you know, there have been places like that, um, but you're saying that you know it, it seems like most of the places that I know on South Street have plenty of parking. Industrial uses don't need as much parking as yeah. a recreational use. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think that's that's just relative. No, it's not. <laughs> it's totally different because the industrial um, buildings typically are warehousing, um, distribution centers, there's more space than there are people. And the recreational uses are definitely more people. So if you go to um, uh, Sky Zone in Westboro, mm -hmm. that particular property had a huge parking field behind the BJ's, which was there. And they took, they, they used every single space. They had 200 spaces. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. It's like, but I mean, that was a, a retail center. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't an industrial building. Okay. If you look at 80 South Street, has acres and acres of parking. Again, it has to do with the use, what you need for the use. So, as long as as planning board is able to define that parking need, regardless of whether they change the building or the site. That's where it, it needs to trigger or something because it's a totally different animal. Yep. So the parking requirements go with use regardless of whether it has planning board review or not. And we do have, actually, a, we have adopted a parking requirement for recreational uses, and it's one for every five occupants as permitted by state building code. One so for every five, five occupants. occupants which is yeah. As defined by the state building code. Oh, five occupants, so that would be the visitors. Right. Everyone, like, anyone, well, it's anyone the yes, too. the capacity yeah. of the yeah. space. Occupancy of the building, okay. That's so it goes with the size of the space. Okay. One. So in that particular case, if, if someone were to take 80 South Street and say, oh, they wanted to do an apex center, you would say, well, okay, that's a different use than what was there, so mm -hmm. th that triggers yep. the parking. And that's what I was just getting at, was that as long as uh, there's, a, there's a review for parking, for a different kind of use in these buildings, because industrial is clearly was designed to be industrial, <laughs> and we're now expanding the industrial use, which I don't have a problem with personally. Right. Yeah. It just it just needs to sort of fit. That makes sense. So, um, first of all, um, you're saying that the, this is this is the state requirements. This no, one it's, space it's per? in the town zoning bylaw. So the town okay. adopted a parking requirement for for this use. Okay, a number of years ago. And is how has that been reviewed for adequacy? Now the if it hasn't come to Zach, then it must be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe there haven't been too many of yeah. them either. So yeah. Okay. So when we did the CrossFit. Um, like when we reviewed CrossFit, mm -hmm. they had to have enough parking. Yeah. And they did because they had, you know, developed a certain space that they were working in. Yeah. You know, forgive my ignorance, but it seems to me that the business itself would want to have adequate parking because otherwise it would limit their business. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, the ones that are more sophisticated and experienced, but yeah. the ones who are starting up and don't understand what they're, you know, it's sometimes they try to sneak it under. Yeah, okay. You know? yeah. So. Um, so how would it work if we made it a buy right? Um, obviously, you know, the parking requirement is already in the bylaws, but if we allowed indoor recreational use by right in both 1A and 1B, or, I'm sorry, 1A, IA, <laughs> industrial A and B, um, what review does it go through to make sure that the facility is adequate and meets all the things, is it? So if they, um, if the use met the requirements for site plan review, if they were building a new building, if there was an ex or an expansion of a certain size of an, an existing building or adding a parking lot, they would have to go to the planning board for site plan review. Mm -hmm. um, 
if there's anything other uh, requirement that's triggered, they might have to go to the Board of Appeals for a special permit for some other unrelated thing having to do with the lot, perhaps. Um, the whether it's allowed by right or by special permit, the zoning enforcement officer reviews that zoning enforcement regardless, okay. right? So if it doesn't go to site plan review, there's still a review by zoning enforcement to make sure that it meets all the zoning requirements um, that are in here that apply to by right uses, the parking, the restrictions on landscaping, screening, anything like that. So there's a review that at the administrative level if it doesn't go to a board. So there's, there's always some level of zoning review for compliance okay. before Which the space can be occupied uh, or retrofitted. Okay, so so by allowing it by right, the the plus for the for businesses for commercial development is that it's easier for everyone. It still gets reviewed from the zoning enforcement for the adequate parking for other features Another above code the site. Compliance and all with the, all various stuff. codes. Yeah. Um, but um, if we put things in allowed by special permit it does have to go through the Zoning Board of Appeals, which you know would review things more carefully, perhaps. And that would be even if it's it the existing building and they don't have to do anything to the building itself? No, 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 so, I actually right. have to, you have to back yeah, up that there. Work? Yeah. They would be no, not necessarily more carefully. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it, it just, it takes out, again, it's one of these that it takes out a hurdle yeah, I understand that, we're, that we're, benefit, we're, but yeah. But, but the, I, I wouldn't say that the Planning Board would look at anything more Lately, than the than the ZBA would look at something. It could be either board, however you. Either recommend. board, but yeah. no, I, I'm saying special permit makes it have to go through zoning board of appeals or planning board, right. rather than just going through the zoning enforcement officer. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's that's really what we're we're looking at changing is is the expanding the the zones from industrial B to both industrial A and B. And then taking out a lot of special permit and putting it in as by right. So typically, when thinking about special permit versus by right, in the past, and discussions have been around whether that use needs an additional level of scrutiny based on its impact. So, yeah. if you think that there's a potential for a big impact, then it's more likely that it should be a special permit use if it's something that needs to be reviewed. There's a public hearing involved with notification to a butter. So it's a higher level of, of review, and it's a discretionary special permit. So just because something is in the by right, uh, if, if there is a facility which requires only 21 plus uh, admission for 21 plus people, will it still go through the act new processing or is does, because it's by right, I can, I can ask for permission to open something like that or do they have to go through st some more steps to get permission? So if it complies and it's by right, so there are various you know building and fire safety codes that somebody would have to meet and they may need to do some interior work. So they'd have to get permits for all of that and there would be a zoning compliance review for the parking and so forth, but they wouldn't need to go to any board necessarily for approval. Okay. The reason why I brought that up was that half axe, which is an indoor recreational facility, is it's just random throwing axes on the uh, wall kind of a, a thing, where only 21 plus are allowed. Thank God, no kids are allowed. But <laughs> there has to be a, somebody has to set that right. Would they? I am assuming it's by law they can't open without getting permission from the town, something like that, right? Or if you, my concern is if we move this indoor recreational just to by right. We, can, we cannot question them. Is that something like that? Or we can still question them for certain things? Uh, I don't know. So, so the, like, use, the use would be allowed if it was by right. And then the only question is, do you meet all the other regulations okay. and, and so yeah. forth that go and with And so that, that regulation about <clears throat> it not impact, you know, everything happens inside the facility and that everything, you know, there's no noise mm -hmm. that, that, it, that goes outside or anything like that. That they would still have to meet those regulations, whether or not they came before board. Right. But right. in terms of it, you know, 21 or over only for axe throwing, I, I don't know that's what regulations there yeah, are. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, that's yeah, that's 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 like you know firearms resta restrictions mm -hmm. at the at the uh, uh, four gun clubs that we have in town. Yeah. Um, you know, so so there are other rules and regulations that take. You can't you can't control everything through zoning. Okay. I have a question though. If something did open there, like, I don't know, axe throwing or an indoor shooting range or something like that, if there were accidents, the town 
would not be responsible for it, right? It would be the owners of the property. Mm-hmm. So I'm just wondering, so by opening something that would be maybe more dangerous, it's not opening us up to anything. That would be my other concern. Well, unless no, the town's opening it. Unless the town runs the... Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to check. You right. know. <laughs> we, do, we, do have the, we do have the lumberjack uh, yeah. um, show every year. I don't think that our <laughs> special permit process is that big of a deal. I really don't. And I think that it gives us an, an ability to look at whatever comes out of the pipe. It's just too hard to understand what possible recreational uses could be here. And I, I just think that, the, you know, these are industrial zones. They're, they're, they were designed for industrial uses and we're expanding them, um, the uses, but we need to kind of understand what that looks like. Is it a 24 hour use? Those kinds of things in the special permit process you can identify, and you can, you know, put But in a, if, if I may, in, in an industrial zone, is it is it that uh, onerous on people to, to, is it that bad to have something open up extended hours in, a, in an area, just like you were saying, most of the time industrial zones are on the edges of towns and... Well, but this um, industrial A backs up to uh, the Lake Maspinock uh, neighborhood, and I think that they would have a problem with that, having, you know, 24 hours there without some kind of ability to, say, have some input. Um, industrial B, not as much. It backs up to 495. Well, on one side and on the other side, there is some residential, but it's And like, a gun club. Well, but the... What's the street? Is it Elm Street that Elmwood's off of? I mean, we heard a lot of uh, you know, feedback on not having tall buildings, not having traffic, not ha- I mean, over the last couple of years that I can recall. And again, if you have the special permit process, which I've gone through, it wasn't that complicated. You know, you actually can sort of filter out anything that's really gonna be a, a huge issue. Mm-hmm. There's something else I was thinking of while you were talking. It's, it's Well, do you want to split the two? Want to at least allow it in Industrial B then? Currently, right? it, currently it is by an Industrial B, is it, that right, it's by right? No, it's By special permit. By special permit. You know, at least, you know, it, it, that just, um, you know, may allow some of that uh, area to be developed. It's right off 195. We don't worry about the traffic as much there. I know what well, I was but thinking. Industrial B does back up to that neighborhood that was very vocal. That's what I'm saying, John. It's Which like one? Industrial A backs up. Well, to the Industrial A backs up to the Lake Maspinock neighborhood. Yeah. Industrial B. What is that street? Is it Elm Street? Then? Elm, I think. Yeah, it's Elm Street. Elm Street, yeah. Yeah, that Elm Street was where um, we had a lot of vocal opposition to doing, you know, commercial in that industrial area. And so I'm just... Mm-hmm. Right, but because of our lack of action there, we're now going to have a, what, 500-foot-long gas station in grocery store or little store there. I kind of like it. So, so oh, okay. <laughs> I know, not everybody does. <laughs> In, indoor recreation uses are already allowed by special permit in industrial B. Correct. Right. Right. So, so we're talking about expanding to industrial A and possibly allowing by right. But there, there so is, John, there John is. wants industrial B to be by right without the special permit. Yeah. Okay. That's why we're having this conversation. And I'm just reminding him of the people that came out in droves saying, listen, you know, we don't want to have all this. You that know. was a hotel. That was, that was when we were talking was, about the hotel. It was a hotel though, John. It was apartments potentially. It was uh, tall buildings that could be uh, a school. Well, there are no um, apartments anymore. Right, no, I understand. But it was, it was, a, it was a bunch of different uses. There could have been a university there. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they just said, look at you know, we want to have some input here. And the only, 
input you can really use is the special permit process. Is that right, Elaine? Yeah. People were concerned. Yeah. Now there is, there is, I saw in the excerpts for the bylaws, there's hours of operation for some of the items, even by right. So we can put something in by right and say, as long as it doesn't go beyond these hours of operation. Do you think that that would be I don't appropriate, know. or do you think? I don't know that that was the only thing that they yeah. were concerned okay. about. Okay. Could we put um, <coughs> a size limit or some kind of verbiage in there that would, you know, it, it depends on where it's located and how it would affect the houses near? Because I'm looking at the map here. If it's like way over here in the bottom corner of the industrial A, it's not going to really affect anybody. Whereas if it's like right sort of at the top, right where all those that neighborhood backs into, it's going to make a much bigger impact on them. So it really, I feel, depends on... To where another overlay district? Where it's located? Recreational overlay district? <laughs> Just putting it out there. Yeah, that is a possibility. I mean, you know, we can subdivide that district if we wanted to say something's allowable. I don't want to sound insensitive, but if you live in an area that's next to an industrial area, and something gets built there, I feel like you can't be too upset about it. I mean, except I, Lake Mass, but not because they're before the industrial. I know. I, know. <laughs> I live in downtown, so I understand. Like you know, I, I live in downtown. So if someone said, "Hey, I'm going to build a business right next to you," I wouldn't be happy about it. But I also know that it's a possibility. You know. Well, that's why the, that's why the, the property values were such because they were next to an industrial zone. And and there is a certain point where. We do want growth, but if we keep putting hurdles, I feel like there's nothing we can do that 100% of everybody in town will be happy about. That is very true. <laughs> so <laughs> if we have too many hurdles, then it's just going to prevent growth from happening. Well, Brenda, we can talk about how this would actually pass a town meeting. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just I'm pointing out that the different part, the different neighborhoods that showed up previously, right. they're still there. Yeah. They're still vocal. They're still alive. Mm -hmm. And I think the special permit process, like I said, it's not a big deal. What, what is the inherent difference by having a health club listed in here by right in these in indoor facilities? Why, why would we treat health clubs differently than these other facilities? When one's allowed by right Have now. Have you been to Apex? Hmm? Have you been to Apex? No. no. Apex is a nighttime entertainment venue, as well as a weekend venue, as well as it drives traffic from, you know, huge part of Massachusetts. So I have a question. Yeah. Do they serve drinks? Sure do. We aren't talking about having that. I know, but that's going to be the next step. That's what I'm saying. Is yeah. like, this is this is the process. But then, no, but then that goes to a whole nother. Yeah. Again, you don't control liquor licenses through zoning. Right. Right. That would be another. You know, not everything's process. controlled through zoning. And and therefore, you know, them them saying, you know, we can we can have the indoor recreational facilities, and if there's no restaurant allowed in that same zone, or the restaurants are limited, or that sort of thing. I know, it's on our list. Is that on this list here? But it's not alcohol. I personally, if I were doing an axe throwing, which is, okay, no. I, don't, I wouldn't want to combine alcohol and axe throwing, but I would think that some of those companies do, because, no, no, you know. No, 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 you, no it's, the same th it's the same thing with um, the Formula One uh, car racing down in the South Shore. Um, they have sobriety checks and everything. Nobody's allowed to get, on, get, get into one of those little vehicles without being completely checked out. And you know, people don't want to get sued either. They, yeah. they, you know, again, we're talking about businesses that, that are there, they want to make money. They, they, they have to, um, you know, appease their, uh, their, their owners. Yeah. So uh, we, we just can't think that everybody that's going to come in there, you mentioned ax throwing, you know, that, that could be just one, one small aspect of some of the stuff that they do there, but I'm sure that they don't just give a, a, uh, an ax to a four-year-old and 
Yeah, yeah exactly. Eight, eight I, I don't have concerns about that because I don't think that they, they could run a business like that. Yeah. But we could restrict the hours, right? Yeah, so they wouldn't be able to, to do stuff too late at night or maybe all weekend long. So that's discussed through the special permit process. But it can be in here. Well, I know, but it, depending on which kind of thing you're talking about, it could be a various amount of differences. So that's why I'm saying it's a special permit process. It's, it's, it's not that complicated, it's simple, and it gives the town the ability to review lots of different kinds of entertainment or recreational uses. So the reason why we are thinking about putting something in Byra, it's just to, so that we can appear as more attractive to that particular business or something like that, right? So, but we, if there is, if there, we can provide some data to back that up, that we are making ourselves more attractive to this kind of business by doing this, maybe that will help convince, because I, I understand what you're saying. I heard oh, the, some no, of the like arguments people, about like the I lights in the night and stuff. I all the time and it's kind of like, okay, what's allowed? And I'll say, okay, this is allowed and this is allowed by special permit. All right, no problem. It's not a big deal. Well, remember when you when we were, uh, were trying to attract a hotel years ago, and and we put these restrictions on it that it had to have a, like a four acre ballroom and it had right. to have this and that, and and and, and the um, Zach and the planning board got into uh, you know architecture at that point trying to decide uh, you know what what a hotel should be, and then we we never were allowed to we never we were never attractive to any hotel chain because they said we don't build hotels like that and you were the one that helped craft that yes. to make sure that we were attractive a little more attractive but we end up coming a little late to the show at that we did point come late to the show. so is there any way that we can craft this so that we get the right kind of recreational um, uses in the right places so that uh, you know we can develop some of this land and, and, and bring in some, some tax revenue that doesn't bring in children. <laughs> well, so I never had dreamt that axe throwing would be an entertainment recreational use. <laughs> never yeah. dreamt about it. Hey, don't tell Joe Regan that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. So if, if someone were to say to me six years ago, craft a, a, you know, a bylaw that would cover that, I wouldn't have even known about it. Um, it, I think it's too hard to figure out what the next fad is going to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, that's why I'm, I'm concerned about just making it by right and not having the ability to kind of filter some of these things that may not be appropriate in our town. And the, and the hotel thing was really so that function hall and the restaurant and all that, John, that was created before. before oh no no no! I understand that. I, well, we, I we came can. in. I came in because there were hotel developers that were questioning whether or not they could come here, and then it was like that became too hard to get past. And then once we got that past, we were sort of late to the game because then they had all started going up to Westboro and Marlboro, and you know we didn't we didn't quite catch it. Um, and they said, they came up with all excuses. Well, you know, you don't have enough there, there, and all that stuff. And, and I was like, but it's coming, and it's, you know, and, and it just, the timing, we'll, we'll catch it on the next one. There's no question about it. The next particular wave, as long as we have, we're building, you know, good commercial uses in town, they'll come. So that brings me to, to the chair, to, to my question. Are there any recreational uses that we think that we might be able to um, not restrict or go by right, you know, is um, laser tag. Is that, does that sound okay to somebody? When they have the room where the kids put on the little vests and they shoot lights and the flashlights at each other, basically, is, um, you know, that seems everybody's worried about axe throwing, but, um, <laughs> you know, indoor archery. Uh, airsoft, um, paintball. Um, yeah. I mean, these are things that, you know, I mean, there's, 
you want to be able to formulate a plan on how those things get housed, right? I'd love to have those in town. <laughs> My kids would, kids would love it. Right, but but again, it's like you; those are kinds of uses that are questionable. And if you're not, if you don't have the the right environment for it, it could be very unsafe. But that's not zoning. But that's not right. So you know, you're getting you're you're putting your personal things of what you believe is safe and not safe. When you're saying, I don't mm -hmm. think that paintball is safe, but they it's been a it's a thriving business. There are mm -hmm. two of them, I believe, in Milford or uh, Upton. Um, and they seem to be doing quite well. Um, you know, in the axe throwing, I haven't seen in the paper anybody that's got hurt so far, but. No, it's, it's fun too. I've tried it, so it's. Mm. That's, that's not <laughs> I've done it at so. Richard's Fair. But. <laughs> you know, so, no, but I'm just, you know, it, it, again, you know, we, uh, a few years ago, we, we had a chance to get a. Um, with parachuting or uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, skydiving, skydiving, yeah. skydiving, mm -hmm. which was going to be the silo that people yeah. mm -hmm. float on, um, but they end up going somewhere else. Uh, but you know that was going to be right on 495, and you know the four, that 495 is not a quiet area. You know you stand, you're, you know standing while you're getting gas at either of those stations. You you hear the trucks going back and forth, back and forth. I can hear them at my house, and I'm way up on the hill. Um, so you know what can we what can we put in that that area right along 495 that you know when you talk about areas that are on the fringe you know we've got a a car repair station we've got a, we've got um, um, McIntyre's truck storage we've got uh, and we've got the um, the gun range and a future uh, swimming tennis club. You know, but there's still a whole bunch of of empty land up there that um, that's definitely not not residential. I'd say, right up against 495. Five. That's my personal opinion. I don't think I wouldn't want to go there. Can I ask something? Yeah, please. Um, also, depending on the type of business that we attract there, if it's something for kids like laser tag or paintball or something, and it is successful. It will also catch the eye of other businesses, like maybe a restaurant, like a family-friendly restaurant or something, and they'll say, wow, this place gets a lot of business. If we opened right next to them, everyone leaving there mm -hmm. would come to our place, and it would be more, it would sort of just open the door for more businesses. To Dave work. and Busters. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite that. So, <laughs> so the way I see it, we can try for all the way to do it by right in both districts. Or we can try to be more conservative, say by special permit in both districts, so still expanding beyond the um, industrial B. And um, if we do it by right, my recommendation would be we'd put um, hours of operation restriction of some sort. And that way that if there's any business that really feels like they have to be longer hours of operation later into the night, they would have to go before the Board of Appeals to get a waiver. But the, the question is, if we try to go all the way, we could get vote, voted down at town meeting more easily, right? If we go more conservatively, perhaps we have a better chance of pans, passing at town meeting. But is it going to be enough of an incentive for businesses yeah, by definitely. listing for special permit? Well, the, the way I see it, right now it's by special permit, we've, and we've attracted nothing. Mm -hmm. But special permit is only noted in Industrial B. There's no mention of it at all in Industrial A. And Industrial B has full buildings. There's four buildings? Full, full, full buildings. buildings. Oh. There's no vacancies. I definitely feel like we have to, you know, consider industrial A. Yeah. A with special permit? I am fine going forward with by right. Wait a minute, what's? Uh, personally. But we could, you know, we could add it just by special permit. 
Uh, so wait a minute, which one has it, has it by? It has it in uh, industrial B. B, B, B special is, permit. B is special permit. So yeah. then, so then could we do industrial A by special permit? Because yeah. that still puts the, the restrictions that you, you spoke of. Yeah. It would pass down meeting more easily. Okay. Possibly. <laughs> we have no idea, really. Um, <laughs> but is that really enough of an incentive? Absolutely. And that's the question. Okay. It does something. I think so. It moves, at least it moves it a little bit. It moves a little bit. But most of the, most of the businesses that would do that, you know, would say, Can, am, I, am I allowed in this zone? Mm -hmm. um, if there was a special permit requirement, you would want them to go through that because that means that they're more, they're better healed in terms of financial, in terms of their plan, in terms of who they are. So that's the, the other pro, you know, their possibility here, because all of the very very strong companies, you know, as long as there is the ability to get through it and the special permit, you know, has some requirements that they meet, they, that's not going to be a big issue for them. Okay, but it won't. It's not a big issue for like a small business either, right? Is it? A small no. business is going to is going to be. It's going to be a little bit more of a challenge because they're not going to be familiar with it. And, and, and the finances yeah. involved the finances. With, with, with getting a, a special permit. Because, so. you know, we really need to think about that. These types of facilities, when I'm, and I'm thinking of the one that I remember in, on South Street, um, that, was, that was a, it wasn't even a franchise. It was a small, mm -hmm. personally owned business. It was a small business, you know? And, and they, you know, they, and I, I would want to see that type of thing encouraged. No? So they would come to the town, they would ask a Mike Shepard, how do I do this? And he would say, no problem, which is what he said to me, okay? He said, all you need to do is, you know, show what you're doing, make a description, come before this board. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if it's all reasonable, then there's no issue. It's when things get like crazy, then you know the planning board is going to say, well, you know, maybe, maybe we could do it this way, or you know, work with that applicant. Does it cost money to get a special permit? It's an application. It costs money. Is it and, a and, law? And lawyers. Mm -hmm. Is it a law? No, like, is it did my special permit with an attorney? And my variance. It's not. It's not the norm. Well. I've had a, I, I had to get I had to get a special permit with an attorney just to put a handicap ramp on the back of my mother's house. So and it wasn't cheap. You know and, and you know this is these these are the kinds of things that that keep small businesses from starting up uh, some of these extra expenses. You know we might look at them as oh it's only hey it's a, it's a company it, you know they're they're a business that want to start but you know if somebody only has ten twenty thirty thousand dollars of seed money to open up a storefront to do something well to, to ask them to spend eight or ten thousand dollars or five thousand dollars to 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 hire an attorney and get the get gets get all the stuff set up and delay it, it, it can be onerous you know, it's yes, it is possible to go through without without a, an attorney. But if you're opening up a business and you want something to go well, you're going to have an attorney with you to make sure that you don't mess up and have to do it again. I'm looking at this thing in terms of indoor recreational uses compared to what's approved by right now at genetic, biological, chemical research centers, laboratories, manufacturing process plants blah, 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 blah. Why wouldn't we, we give an industrial recreational use the same thing as, as what's already in the, in the by right section in the industrial A? It's true. It's not industrial, that's why. Because you think of it as retail. That's, that's basically. But what, it's got like a whole bunch of different why are we Why are we discriminating between industrial and commercial? Because the, the, you know, our master plan says we want to grow commercial growth and development. That's, that's the goal of the master plan is growth and development. Sure. And, right. and where else are we going to grow indoor recreation if we're not doing it in the industrial? Should we allow it in residential right. then? No, I'm saying that because it's an industrial zone, 
and you're taking a recreational use and you're putting it, which normally goes in retail, all right, and you're trying to put it in an industrial zone, you really need to be able to look at all the details of that use. One of, the, one of the biggest objections that the Chamber of Commerce hears in terms of why aren't we locating in Hoppington, so there's nothing to do in Hoppington. There's no recreation, there's no restaurants, there's no hotels. So how are we going to develop Well, the how big is our retail area? You know, we, we have three empty storefronts. People say, you know, okay, which it's, it's not empty by zone. by zone. No, 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 that's what I'm just saying. They're, but but we, our retail area is so small to begin with is that so you know who could who could locate in that in the in the area we have to find and we have no parking well, <laughs> that's a whole different topic. right no no but that's what i'm saying so so we about, i'm talking about taking a recreation like an apex and sticking it in an industrial but i know it's you, just that's what we're talking about but you keep saying apex 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 well, but and you know so so you're talking about the biggest thing but we can't put new york city into hopkinton either you know, the apex area was a, it was a big, it's a, it's a, it's a whole... It easily could go on South Street. That whole thing could go right on South Street. But a company like that would also look at the space and say, we don't have enough parking to have the amount of people we would need to... And it would fail. Make profit. Yeah. Not what, so, we should have industrial uses in industrial zones by right and have other uses in industrial zones by special permit. Because they're different uses, they have different they have different variables and attributes, and it's not a big deal to have a special permit. Was what I'm saying is that that is, you know, the um, Apex guy. He basically he did you know several different uses, and I think it's four levels, and he got those permits himself for all those uses. That's Marlboro. Yeah, Marlboro also has a, a full marketing team in, within their town government. Marlboro makes um, videos to attract businesses to come to their town. Marlboro works with their people as opposed to putting up restrictions. Marlboro is, is trying to attract as much uh, commerce as possible. In Hopkinton, we try to restrict it as much as possible. And granted, that's exactly what, what zoning is for, to attract or detract people from doing things in town. If we're, gonna, if we're going to continue to, to um, uh, drive businesses away, then there's nothing we can do about, uh, about the growth and as far as, we keep saying we don't want any more residential growth with too many children coming into our school systems, it's costing too much money. But if we, if we don't attract um, commercial, then we're in the same boat. We're doing exactly the same thing over again. Yeah, I mean, the other things that are allowed by right are health clubs, landscaping businesses, restaurants, health services facilities, retail stores. Those are all approved uses by right that are not industrial. And I, I think these indoor recreational kind of fit right in with all those other things that are already allowed by right. I'm just, I can't understand why we would want to restrict this one to special permit when these other ones are already allowed by right. I think 80 South Street would be perfect for something like that. With the, they have two gigantic lots of parking to try and get that, that building used for something to start pulling in some, some personal property taxes. It's, you, you have to, you're, you're taking something and you're saying it's one thing when it really isn't. So 80 South Street, there have been offers made on that building. They don't even respond to the offers. Okay, so we don't know what's wrong with that process, but it has nothing to do with desire. It has to do with that particular property owner. All right? And I don't think that the special permit process is that onerous especially if someone was going to look at 80 South Street. Well, that's a bigger building. Four, no, but, uh, four and a half million dollars. I mean, it's just, I mean. Yeah, that, that, that's a small business, right. 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 That, that's the point. All right, so, then, so for that, I'll, I'll make a motion to allow indoor recreation by right in industrial, oh, no, no, by, by special permit in industrial A. Any further discussion? 
I think we I think we beat this one up. I know. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Abstentions? Aye. You're opposed? How about you? Okay, so we it yeah. doesn't pass. It's not passing. So what would you say? What do you how would you vote? Any? So who, yeah, what, what was that vote again? Okay. <laughs> so um, to allow by special permit these facilities in 1A. Right now they're allowed in 1B only. F 1B. I keep saying 1B. It's IB. By special I, permit. Right. Okay. So, so is it 3 to 2? Did you vote? No, did you? no, I didn't vote. I was waiting, <laughs> waiting to see. No, you have to vote. No, you can't vote. You can't wait. No, I was, I, I was just, uh, I'm, I apologize. <laughs> um, but um, it was, it was two eyes, right? Two eyes yeah. and two nose. Two nays. So, mm -hmm. would you so if I vote yeah, yes, I would, I would like to like it to be by right. So should I? I should vote no. You right? can, no, you right. You, you, you can, should vote you no, and then make another, okay. make another. Yeah. You can make another um, motion. No. So that was three nays, and I was going to abstain. Um, and my my suggestion was we table it, and perhaps take it up um, with. Uh, Additional members, but that was before before you moved for you know the wording to to actually go forward. Well, um, I, I'm I'm I I really I really think it would be better by right, but at the same time you know I could see it going forward for the special permit. Could, would you allow me to make a motion? You can make a motion okay. at any time. Anybody I'd, can make a I'd motion like at to any make time. A motion that we allow industrial recreation uses by right in industrial A and industrial B districts. Anyone second? Sorry, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's one. Aye. Two, three, four. Aye. And uh, all opposed? Nay. Any abstentions? Okay. So right. we're going to propose that it go forward by right in both districts. And let the planning board fight about it. <laughs> What's next? Oh, okay. Next. Retail, Retail store. store. Mm -hmm. So it seemed to me that this th this was retail use, accessory retail use. Okay, there's an accessory retail use by right proposed, and there's a retail store maximum size change that are being proposed. Yeah, they're two separate. Two separate ones, okay? But very, you know, they're related. So we want to go for the, do want to go, do, let, wanna do, let's, let's do industrial, increase in retail store size, because that's something that Rhea really knows about. And we can use her expertise on okay. this one. Okay, and currently the retail store size is? 2,000 square feet. 2,000 square feet, is that in both one, uh, industrial A and that. industrial B? Well, I know we did it in that mixed use, I think. Of. It's both 2,000. 2,000. Okay. Do we have any retail? No. In those districts, not in those districts. Okay. So those provisions. The retail granite store B. Yeah. Isn't that retail? That's an accessory. The, Galaxy the granite. granite? Oh, yeah. Galaxy. Well, they're, that's a, uh, an accessory to their manufacturing. Yeah, they're a manufacturing facility. But that's... I know, they, they, I they, they, they are what we're, what we're talking about, allow, yeah. <laughs> I didn't but, think that was allowed already. It's in both A and B, mm -hmm. the 2,000 limit. So how, what, what is the proposal in terms of how many square footage it 5, should be? You said go from, from two, two to, to five. five. Um, just to get an idea visually, how big is 2,000 square feet? Uh, there in this room? 40 by 50. So this is probably 1,500 feet, maybe? Maybe 1,000? I guess so. 
Okay. The whole building is about 19,000. I'm sorry, what? The whole building is about 19,000. All floors. Yeah, all it's floors. Mm -hmm. So 2,000 square feet is pretty small for a Yeah, pretty small. Mm -hmm. But it was, was that put in because of... We did, when, uh, we, we did it we were together with that one too. It was, no, it was that um, we thought that, that it would just be a sundry store to support the people that were at a company so they wouldn't have to go all the way downtown to get stuff. I was going to say cigarettes, but no, nobody does that anymore. I think the concern was that, that if um, too much retail, if it was too attractive to retail, then it would displace the industrial. And so the town was looking to keep the genetic, you know, industries and, and high tech and so forth. And it didn't want, say, big box retail to come in and displace um, um, a company that had higher paying jobs and, and, and different traffic volumes and so forth. So I think that was part of the concern that it wanted to preserve the industrial base in those in those areas. Yeah. That was Same why thing it was recreational limited. too. That was why it was limited. Yeah, yeah. Because before then, it wasn't allowed at all. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want to go full into it. They wanted to start small. Where does hmm. Finn been? Is that in Industrial A? No, it's a it's business really district. That's a business mm -hmm. district. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing else. I don't know what what um, moving two thousand to five thousand actually accomplishes. Um, a two thousand square foot retailer wants to be next to an anchor tenant. A five thousand square foot retailer wants to be next to an anchor tenant. So, you know, it's it's if the town was concerned about you know eliminating the industrial park because it would turn into big box retail. The big box retail is really not that big of a concern today. Um, yeah, that's true. I mean, we still have Walmart and Costco looking out of this market, but that's those are the only two that you know we consider, and maybe an Amazon of some sort distribution. But those are oh, that would hundred be thousand plus yeah. square feet. So yeah. that's not that's not what this is all about. So I'm not sure what we accomplished by going from two to 5,000 square feet, if there was a specific? Maybe thing. a UPS store. UPS store is 2,000 feet or less. You know, but, and also Amazon's now doing small retail sh shops too. They are. Even though I drove past a couple of clothes, Sears and Roebuck today. It was pretty sad down West on Florida. <laughs> but if they, if the, a company now wanted I don't know, 5,000 square feet, could they just apply for, like, a, to the appeal board to do it, or it's just not allowed at all? They could apply for a variance, but um, it would be unlikely that that would meet the standards for a variance. Okay. Want to try? So who brought up the idea that going from two to 5,000 square feet made some sense? Chamber. That was, Chamber. It was Scott. Scott. So where is Scott? We'd like to ask him what he was thinking of. <laughs> so I, maybe I misunderstood. I thought the, this was something related to something, having like a Reebok uh, front-end store. Oh, no, that's the bottom the, one. That's, that's, the, the that's the next one. That's the next one. Okay. Hey, uh, you know, that's why I want to know whether you think, so it still might not make any difference. So then what, so, so is anybody into trying it? I mean, restaurant, maybe, but the, just a, a retail use. I mean, we just have big stores and really little stores now. Yeah, what's, you know, what's the size of, of a price chopper? 40,000 feet. Yeah, so. 50, yeah, so it wouldn't be, yeah, they wouldn't be putting a price chopper up there, but, you know, but maybe, a, as I said, this might attract a, an, one of those Amazon stores that they, that they have a few things up and you, st you still buy them electronically while you're in there, but they have some, some of their quick moving items. I wouldn't go there freestanding though, John. I That's know, not you're what right. they do. No, you're right. You're right. So I, I mean, I mean, if Scott wanted to come or to let us know what he was thinking, then maybe make some sense. 
all I know is that a lot of the things we work on, we never get past in town meeting, and this would be one of those things that was like, well, what's the reasoning? <laughs> yeah, I know. I hey, remember adding the word residential? The that passed in two minutes? <laughs> it didn't pass at town meeting? Yes. <laughs> All right, we'll wait for, what do you think we should wait for Scott? I just, yeah, I don't, I don't see, I, personally, I don't see the big benefits of this one. Um, uh, let's jump to, then let's go, to, let's go to the related one. Okay, let's go to the related one. Um, so the proposal to allow by right um, re uh, retail stores attached as an accessory to, you know, manufacturing facility, something along those lines. So yeah, that was a great store. Idea. I think it's a great so idea. This is more interesting, but do we have any kind of like a, a size or, you know, of, of the store? Can we put restrictions on it? Because mm -hmm. if it's just a storefront attached to the warehouse sort of for basic sales, then I don't see the problem with it. But if they want to have sort of like a huge store and the warehouse, then I can see where that would get. They want to just say maximum. <laughs> let's, we, let's get the 5,000 in there. A maximum of 5,000 square feet or something. I'm Is just that, trying to think of what kind of, because like the marble place, you know, if you want to see the marble, you're going to go out to like where the warehouse area part is anyway. The front, so front, that's the front parking lot. Right, they do. Have a, they have a little. They have a little retail space there. Right, but I'm saying and like, you go into the showroom and you sit yeah. down and you, you do your selection. Um, but that's probably a thousand feet. Right. I, I feel like if you have a warehouse already, you don't need that much storefront. Mm -hmm. Well, unless you know, but there's liability having people go through go through a warehouse too. When you go to to a granite warehouse, you have to put on a hard hat. And, really, and I didn't do that when I picked out my countertop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 New, New Balance and yeah, has you know a huge retail facility attached to some of their manufacturing. Mm -hmm. A lot of the shoe manufacturers do that. But they wouldn't need a big. Room. That's what I said. That's what, what I said. Let's, let's limit to five thousand square feet. So let's mm -hmm. try five thousand. What a brewery. That's a restaurant, right? Not necessarily. Tap room? Not necessarily. So, well, we've gone through this. This is not. This is not like an unknown. Start line. Start off as a brewery, right? And then they expanded to a, a tap room, and now they're going to be a full service restaurant, correct? Mm -hmm. cool. But that's different. That's an agricultural use. They're not full service restaurants. No. no, that's what they said to me that they were. Ooh, going. I know they're not a full service restaurant. No, no, they're they're not yet, but that's where they're going. That's what they told. But me. that's that's a different. I'm thinking of the industrial right. use, right. the industrial district. Is that something that would fit there? And it maybe would have an associated store. So they could sell the alcohol. You just can't drink it on site. They could. Yeah, they could have that. Could be potentially. You could have a bakery. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. wanted to be a wholesale bakery distribution and have a retail th store out front. Yeah. yeah, so we already have language about that, right? A manufacturing assembly or processing plant with the categories listed, food and kindred project products. It, maybe we restrict the things that can have a retail store, not maybe not machinery or uh, transportation equipment. First, just the A to E could have retail and the rest of them just amend this to say manufacturing assembly or processing and retail. Uh, 21037 8. What page? Uh, sorry, 24. So, with any of those, it's potential you could have some kind of a store. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. not for all the categories, all the categories which may not fit, just to have an, if they can have manufacturing assembly or processing in addition to. Or furniture, if somebody's making wood furniture. Wood furniture. Like that. Mm -hmm. I can see up to A to E. I don't, I don't know about F to K. I don't know. Could make axes. <laughs> you can? Why not? <laughs> I actually really think that any of them could. You think? I mean, I so, you know, in, any of these, any of these um, could potentially want to sell their products yeah, directly. 
some of them just with a small office. And Again, so, and I, no, I think we just limit it to, to, to 5,000 square feet. Yeah. See, if it, see if it works. But it's retail, not as it's a retail. restaurant. It's retail, that's what we yeah. say, retail. Right. Restaurants don't fall into retail, right? No. Okay, so let me get back to it now. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion again. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if this one works. Allow accessory retail use by right in the industrial A and B districts limited to 5,000 square feet. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Okay. Six, I'm trying to figure out which one I'm looking at, if it's industrial A or I know, that oh, just, I, I, okay. yeah, without my glasses, I was just having a tough time. <laughs> you see, oh. zoom it up and then I can't, then I can't scroll well. Yeah. Okay. All right, so where so, are we now? All right. Oh, restaurant seat limit. Restaurant seat limit. Okay, restaurants that contain no more than 100 seats and that are not open for business after 11 p.m. is allowed by right in Industrial B. And let's see, Industrial A has what? No seat limit. And in Industrial B, you can have more than 100 seats by special permit. Right. After 11 p.m. So, want to just add that same language then to, to the other one? Then, then that gives the special permit protection, but it doesn't make it. But industrial A doesn't doesn't have any seat limitation whatsoever. It just has restaurants. It just says industrial A restaurants are allowed, right? Yes. As I recall, right. the concern in industrial B was from that adjacent neighborhood was concerned about activity at night. Oh, okay. So we're just talking about expanding industrial B. So they go over, over 100 seats by special right. permit. Is that, is mm -hmm. that? Yep, anything over 100 seats or after 11 p.m. be by special permit today. That's current. Oh, that's, that's, that's current. current. Oh, that's current. It's current. Oh, okay. I just thought it was, I thought it was not allowed. What are we trying to do? We're trying to do it in industrial A and... Oh, industrial A already allows it. Yes. Yeah. It allows everything. I mean, well, yeah. Well, people aren't building restaurants that are very big anymore. Mm. Okay, this is that we're on increased restaurant seat limit in industrial B. That's all we're looking at. Correct. Not industrial A. Yeah, industrial A already allows restaurants yeah, so it's industrial of any B. size because there's no limitations listed. It's essentially taking the 100 seat limit off of the industrial B yeah. and making it consistent with industrial A. So that if somebody was coming to this area, they could look at industrial, look at industrial B and try to find the, the location that was best for them. So will we leave the special permit required for after 11 p.m. just remove the seat limit? So this was added in 2012 and amended in 2017. Does anyone know what the amendment was in 2017? Yes, that was, to, that was just to define a restaurant. Um, oh, yeah. Right. It was really just to define a restaurant because we were, um, uh, it was demanded, it was, it was, yeah, it was demanded of us by, by, uh, by a judge. And we went to consistent terms. So sometimes it talked about restaurants where all patrons are seated, and some places just said restaurants. So we just went to just restaurants. Restaurants. Okay. Okay. So change in the term and the def definition of the term. Okay. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think that not open for business after 11 p.m. is probably still something we'd want to keep, mm -hmm. especially in that area. And how about to make it more palatable to, to some people that maybe we just, what about the, the hotel overlay district? Why don't we just make it over 100, I write, in the hotel overlay district 
because that, that tightens down the area. In industrial B. In, In industrial, industrial B. B. And the zoning map do you have? It's the, I hatch, know your buttons. the yellow hatched area. <laughs> <laughs> John, I'm just remembering no, that the other people, you know, we went through a lot of discussion on this previously. But, you know, I, again, yeah, I still see that as really coming down to the, the height of the hotel is what killed, killed that whole thing before. Um, that was more than that. But, um, so the overlay district is both the north and the south side, 135. I personally, yeah, think that the north side would be not very useful. Because we stopped it. Useful. Yeah. We stopped it from get it, getting into the hotel overlay district, stopped from getting in close to any of the residential. Right. And so that's why I think that that may be, that may cover the, anybody, since that passed last year. So mm -hmm. wouldn't we just be expanding the overlay district then to have it be hotel and restaurants? How would you attack that? I think what John was saying was that within the hotel overlay district subset of industrial B, yes. that there wouldn't be a, a seat limit on restaurants, right? Right, yeah. exactly. right. No, I, that, yeah. that I think. Regardless of whether it was in a hotel or not. Right, and so we're not doing the whole uh, industrial B, which, which could, uh, could be problematic at town meeting, that we're just doing um, the hotel overlay district, which people are okay with having a hotel there, so I don't think they'd object to having a restaurant there. The hotel would probably have a restaurant anyways, right? Right, yeah, exactly. right. Depends, totally depends yeah. on the Exactly, yeah. we did that. Yeah. And all the other restaurants that, that, are, yes. that are in that general vicinity are actually in the business district, right? Like 110 Grill and so on. Well, that was that, an overlay Osma district, so that's that, a different that, animal. That NMU, the NMU district. NMU? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, okay, it's over there. That's where 110 Grill it is. It looks like a business is in the rural. Is that we restricted okay. what a hotel is, and said how big the restaurant should be and all that, and then that's what happened last year, is the year before, that it can be a coffee shop. It does not necessarily have to be a sit-down restaurant. Okay. Okay, so like I'll one. make a motion okay. to, um, remove the seat limit, restaurant seat limit, in the Industrial B Hotel Overlay District. Second. All in so, favor. Wait a minute, does that make sense, oh, Elaine? Sorry. I think we know what it means. Yeah, okay, good. I just, so, no, yeah. just want to make sure that, <laughs> yeah. that, 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 that it's right. So within that, that Hotel Overlay is District. Is everyone in? here clear that that's, which district that is? Okay. The Hatch, mm -hmm. just the Hatch. Anyway. So it stays in place elsewhere. Right, and yep. it's the, the restriction stays in place outside of the hatched, hatched area. Got it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I just want to clarify yes. the language there. Um, just to make sure we're keeping the time limit in the hotel yeah. overlay area. Mm -hmm. okay. But then we have to take another vote then. Did you vote? No, because no. no Did I'm, you? I'm, I'm, I'm in favor. I oh, okay, okay, great, great, great. great. So be careful. Right. The yeah. Okay. Change when we write it up. Good. So we can write it up, and you can review it at the next meeting. If that makes sure. sense, Perfect. and then it will go to the planning board after that. Just we so that good people today. understand it. These all have to go to town meeting Perfect. eventually. So. Okay. So retail store maximum size. So we're gonna we're gonna come back to that one. Yes. Yes. We need, uh, we need uh, some more chamber input. We did it. Yes, we did. Wow. Okay, we've got 10 minutes to get the uh, minutes approved. I think we can do that in 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> but um, the work program, I'm going to suggest that um, I do this offline with, with um, John just to like suggest some suggest the um, plan of action for the next few meetings, if that's okay with everyone, okay? Um, rather than doing it here with everyone. And I'd sent you an email earlier today, but you probably didn't get it if you were no, I was, flying I was, in. <laughs> I was stuck in Charlotte. Yeah, okay. Um, 
All right, um, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting from November 26th. Second. Um, Thank you. Uh, yes? Any? We did not have the thing, the only thing that I brought up, which was screening of trash cans or taking them off. And I know it's more of a general dialogue, but it just sort of fell off of the minutes. Oh, it's not, oh, it's, oh, not, it's fell off the minutes. I see. So I it, it made it to the work plan. I, I, I just noticed that. Yeah, it's, it's in the work plan. It's so. in the work plan. It just didn't make it into the minutes. And I, I, you know, just saw that. And we Did were you, discussing, Elaine, um, certain items that were probably more general bylaws than they were zoning bylaws. But because we have to start someplace, that it was, you know, so we would we would look at that language um, here, and it was and we did clarify. So you could jot that into the minutes from last time. Is that we, we clarified that um, that your suggestion had to do with the um, retrieval of tat trash cans. Well, the screening and retrieval. Yeah, so retrieval that, from from the roadside. You know, yeah. so it can't be screened at the roadside. Right. So, but it's. Retrieval within 24 hours or 48 hours or something like that. Something was, reasonable, yeah. but um, yeah, because we, I guess we have a bylaw. We can't put our snow out onto the road, but we don't have a bylaw that says we should take our cans back. <laughs> what do you think, Elaine? I wasn't here for the discussion, no, so. No, yeah, I know, but I'm just. Thank you. We, we should add that on to the minutes because we did have that conversation. We can insert that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, it's, and it's in the work plan, so. so any crazy typo? It says zero South Street on the first page. It just, just keeps popping in my head. So. Okay. So, you know. Any other corrections? No? Mr. Catino arrived at this time. Oh, you know, I think that's the zero South Street in that second line. I can, because that is the, it doesn't have an address yet. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, good. It's, Sorry, it's I was like, I why does it say it's in? So anything no, without an address. Thank you. Sounds like, what is that? Like, must be some typo or something? <laughs> no, no, no. That, whenever, whenever someone doesn't have an address, it's always just oh, okay. zero. Yeah. The only thing I just noticed was when Mike Shepard was talking about Brookline, it says the city of Brookline would be the town of Brookline. Okay. That's just a <laughs> Good. Anything else? Did you find anything else? It, it, there were just uh, some rambling in here that we wasn't resolved. It's fine. It's. it's <laughs> well, there were. Yeah, no, that was that was. That accurate last rambling? meeting was like. <laughs> <laughs> we were just discussing <laughs> ideas, <laughs> brainstorming, as you will. Okay. Uh, okay. So it has been moved and seconded. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Your minutes are approved, and um, we agreed that we're meeting on the 20th and the 7th, and that we're, we're going to double check people's schedules for the 22nd Excellent. of January. Excellent. Two, that's a Tuesday. I think you were just coming into the room when we were discussing that, possibly. Because um, the on? 21st yeah. of January is a- There's no other meetings that night. Okay, good. No, as long as, that, as, long as I'm not, not in the seat for something else, you can be here. Yes. Got it. For this. I like that. I'm you just show up in this room like, every single night <laughs> just in case there's a meeting, right? Okay. Um, are we ready to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Excellent. Abstentions. Thank you very much. Thank Isabella, you. Isabella, I'll call you in a few minutes. <laughs> Thank you.